If you don't play League of Legends, all you've heard is stories of League players being incredibly toxic and trolling. Then if you do play League, you can confirm that that's pretty accurate. 2000 games, 600 LP. If I were you, I will. Oh, here we go. They love this line. <laughs> but sometimes these trolls can go a bit too far and perhaps it's not so funny. We'll be looking at a few different stories today, but let's just get right into things with the time this Korean streamer was trolled by her own viewers and held hostage in a ranked game of League of Legends for 3 hours and 40 minutes. On July 11th, 2022, the streamer named Kewel on the Afrika TV platform was streaming League like everyone does when she got into a game with two viewers on her team. There was also two viewers on the enemy team. From here on out, she would have one of the worst League of Legends experiences ever. <laughs> This was a four-man operation, and their goal was to simply keep her hostage in the game for as long as possible, and to kill her as many times as possible as well. Two players would need to be on the enemy team, and two players would need to be on her team, the two on her side being the most important. They will be the ones preventing the surrender vote from going through. Additionally, their job is to clear the minions from ending the game. And then finally, they're also constantly telling the enemy team where the streamer is. Ironically, when the game started, she had covered the map with her webcam to prevent stream sniping. And from what I understand, this is literally all just to make her go through a bad experience. No, we chara, no, we chara, no, we chara, no, we chara. <laughs> During the first hour, her and her teammate were attempting to hopefully get a lucky win, but after some time, it became near impossible. One of the trolls was playing Senna, and Senna's passive causes her to gain bonus attack damage and attack range for every stack she gets. After so many hours, she was able to hit the streamer while basically never being in danger. In this clip, she is able to kill Irelia in bot lane while Senna is standing in mid lane. Now, the question you may have is, why didn't she just leave? And well, at a certain point, she kind of did. After an hour, she started to just talk to chat and not focus on the game. And as time went on, after the 2 hour mark, she just kind of ditched the game and started to play FIFA instead and checked on the game momentarily. In the end, she died a total of 122 times and we actually miss how the game ended as she was still playing FIFA. Odds are the trolls probably wrapped things up since she stopped giving them any attention. But when the game came to a finish, her client was frozen, likely due to the insane length of the game. Though after restarting the game and logging back in, she received a message informing her that her account had been banned for 14 days. This most likely due to the fact that the automated system perceived her as intentionally feeding when she died over 100 times and was reported by 4 players in the game. She ends the stream by writing an appeal ticket to Riot as to why she didn't deserve to be banned. In this message, she basically explains exactly what the trolls were doing and closes the ticket by asking, is there any reason why I should be suspended for 14 days here? Later she uploaded all of this to a video on her YouTube channel where she shows screenshots of a chat room where these players were planning how they'd target her. The last message in the video is her hoping that this doesn't happen again. In the end, these guys just spent 4 hours of their life micromanaging a video game just to slightly inconvenience one other player. This is time that they could have spent doing anything else, like maybe playing Clash Royale, the sponsor of today's video. Clash Royale is a free to play game set in the Clash universe where you collect cards, build your decks, and challenge other players in real time multiplayer battles. Kind of like League, but instead of having to worry about 4 crying teammates, it's just you and your favorite units. The objective is to destroy your opponent's king and princess towers before they destroy yours or time runs out. Although there are a variety of different game modes. Like if you do enjoy playing with others, there's a 2v2 game mode and clan wars where you can play with your friends and battle other clans. At the end of the day, you win and climb the ranks by upgrading your cards, leveling up your troops, and creating the best strategies. Each unit has their own strengths as well as weaknesses, and the more you play, the more you learn to maneuver against your opponents. 
And odds are, you've probably seen memes from this game while traversing the internet. And perhaps you even contemplated playing it. And to that, I'll say it's never too late to jump in. The game is constantly evolving, with new cards and game modes being added to the game frequently, alongside tournaments and events where you can acquire special rewards. And in case you're intimidated to get started, once you complete the initial tutorial, you get right into the real game, upgrading your cards, winning battles, and collecting trophies. So if you're ready to jump into the world of Clash Royale, download the game with my link in the description, available on iOS and Android for free. This next troll slash cheater takes place in Professional Valorant, which I know isn't League, but trust me, the game doesn't really matter here. As Valorant continues to increase in popularity, so does the esports scene as well, with multiple major leagues and competitions for all players, including leagues with female divisions. And this is where things get weird. The player named Dyslexic, yeah, I, I don't know, was recently banned from Professional Valorant for eight years. Now, what could they have possibly done to receive such a punishment? Well, first, on October 9th, 2022, the player was suspected of cheating and their team was disqualified after winning a match. The team then denied the cheating allegations and it's possible that they actually didn't cheat. There's a lot of details to this, but apparently if an account was queuing with a player who was cheating, both the cheater and the friend can be punished. And allegedly that's the situation that happened here. Although Dyslexic was exposed for previously having experience using cheats, so who knows. The story gets bizarre, however, when Dyslexic chimes in with their own Twitlonger. You know, that's where all good dramas begin, on Twitlonger. Here, the player continues to deny their cheating allegations, but instead, they also ask for forgiveness because they lied about their gender. The tournament states that only women or members of marginalized groups, such as non-binary, may participate. The twit longer starts with, On September 8th, I messaged Jenny with a terrible joke of a hypothetical, what if I faked non-binary and played in Game Changers? He then includes the Discord DMs where he says to one of the members of the team, Jenny, what if I go non-binary on an alt and play in Game Changers? Jenny replies, do it. LMFAO, I will be honest with you, I don't know why he admitted any of this. Perhaps he wanted to come clean and stop living in a lie, but in the end, it got himself banned for 8 years, which in gaming is pretty much forever, and the teammate that knew about him faking his qualifications was suspended for 5 years as well. And the craziest part is that this isn't even the first time it's happened in Professional Valorant. Odds are situations like this will continue to happen. So the heavy suspensions from Riot are mostly to send a message that if you get caught doing this, you'll be heavily punished. Now back to serious trolling, here's one of the most insane forms of trolling you'll ever hear, at least within League of Legends. In 2015, police in South Korea reported that in 2014, they received over 8,000 online defamation cases, and half of them all referred to comments that were made by players within League of Legends. In Korea, defaming people online is illegal, and as the laws weren't made with online video game chats in mind, if you personally type something nasty directed to another player, you're technically committing a crime. Not to mention that to make such accounts in Korea, you often do have to use your real ID. Anyway, with everything I just said, some individuals came up with a genius blackmail scam. These trolls would go into a League of Legends match and announce their real life names and personal details. After that, they would play poorly and bait their teammates into writing mean and explicit comments towards them. The troll will then screenshot all of the player's toxic comments and threaten to send everything to the police unless they pay the troll a sum of money. The police reported that these trolls were getting players to pay somewhere between $300 to $2,000 from this blackmail scam. The most successful version is the troll actually submitting everything, personally contacting the victims, and getting them to pay a settlement to drop the charges. This happened so many times that police in Korea were genuinely warning people. And eventually the laws had to be tweaked so that such situations wouldn't happen. However, these wouldn't be the only people to fall into legal problems due to their behavior in League of Legends. This is Justin Carter of Austin, Texas. In 2014, he was arrested over threats he wrote on Facebook on a post he made discussing League. 
I'll have his comments on screen, but I won't read them as I think YouTube might not be too happy. Although, quote, Carter's camp alleges that the youth followed his comment with JK, just kidding, which if true, would all but resolve the case. But police deny that any JK disclaimer was present in the post. I thought that was worth mentioning as it makes things feel even more ridiculous. Regardless of the context, Justin was arrested and faced 8 years in prison over his comments. And despite being a local arrest, this story went viral globally as every report focused on the fact that he was a League of Legends player. The alleged threat says his father came after Justin played the online multiplayer video game League of Legends. I actually featured this story in a video I made over 5 years ago, but today I learned we actually got some closure. After posting bail, I believe Carter didn't do too much time inside, but he was classified as a felon and had lost his privileges to use the internet. Five years later, in March of 2018, Carter was able to revisit his case and requested permission to use the internet again and to have his felon status reduced in order to potentially secure a better job. Thankfully, the court agreed and his felony was reduced to a misdemeanor. In conclusion, be careful what you say on the internet. Thanks for watching and take care.